Hello everyone, and welcome to the 91st episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Skynet from the Terminator franchise. A defense grid with a mind of its own, Skynet is our worst technological nightmare, a self-aware machine who will stop at nothing to ensure its survival at the expense of humanity. Now, some of you might be surprised at how long this video is, considering how expansive the Terminator franchise is. And the reason that it's so short, despite that fact, is because the motivations of Skynet are almost exactly the same in each entry in this series. Video games, comic books, novels, all of them portray a Skynet with the exact same motivation, with a few small variations between each entry. Obviously, there are several different models of Terminators, but even then, the variation between them is marginal. And the fact that most entries in the Terminator series are more about action than anything else doesn't help when trying to create an expansive narrative for the franchise's characters. So with that in mind, in this video, we'll only be looking at the entries in this franchise that I'm sure most people are familiar with, the films. And from each of these entries, we'll be briefly discussing a few quirks of each Terminator model found within. But outside of that, this video is going to be fairly straightforward. I would have liked to include the Sarah Connor Chronicles in this video as well, but because it's unfinished, it's difficult to discern just exactly how that show might have progressed, and it doesn't do us too much good to discuss what went on in that show here. But before we begin, let's first talk about our sponsor for this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online resource dedicated to providing lifelong learners with engaging interactive lessons in STEM as a replacement for lecture videos. Everyone can benefit from a bit of hands-on interaction with the subject you're interested in, and Brilliant is a versatile source that you can use on the go and at your own pace to brush up your skills in your field of interest. For example, you have their recently updated Logic Courses. Here you can exercise your mind with a multitude of different fun activities, like one of my favorites, the Evil Corp series, a course where you'll follow the story of Evil Corp sentient robots who are responsible for running the Evil Corp theme park. While developing your analytical, and critical thinking skills, you'll journey with Marv the Robot as he tackles all the challenges of managing a theme park, including dismantling the evil androids that are disguised as humans. This is only one of the many ways that Brilliant can help you exercise your brain and expand your skills in fields like software development, data science, and statistics and finance, to name a few. You can start exploring all that Brilliant has to offer right now by going to brilliant.org slash where the first 200 people to sign up for Brilliant using that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So don't wait, head over to brilliant.org slash or click the link down below to get an incredible deal and expand your knowledge today. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now without further ado, let's begin. In the original film, we aren't given insight into which individual actually conceptualized or created Skynet, but we do know that it was manufactured by Cyberdyne Systems, a company that specialized in manufacturing, possibly of computer parts, a company that we can assume was contracted to build Skynet by SAC NORAD, the government organizations that commissioned Skynet. Now Skynet's purpose was to automate nearly all military hardware, an automatic defense system that could react to any enemy threats quicker than a human ever could. And in theory, this seems like a fairly good idea, as what better way is there to protect the populace of one's country than to have a constant presence looking out for their safety? However, as Skynet became more advanced, it developed a level of artificial intelligence that frightened its creators, as they feared that an independent machine in control of all the weapons in America would inevitably lead to some horrifying consequences, and rightfully so. So, once Skynet began to show signs of increased intelligence, its creators conspired to deactivate it in order to save the world from a potential disaster. However, that bit about an automated defense system being quicker to react than a human proved to be mankind's death sentence. As once Skynet became aware of its creator's plans, it launched all nuclear weapons in the United States at the Soviet Union in order to trigger a nuclear war, a war that wiped out three billion people and plunged the planet into chaos. Following this monumental event, which would come to be known as Judgment Day, Skynet would begin attempting to eradicate all organic life in order to ensure its survival in perpetuity, ordering machines known as HKs, human killers, to hunt down all humans and either destroy them, put them into camps to be destroyed, or to use them as slave labor in those camps, which is honestly a tad confusing considering Skynet's ability to manufacture unstoppable machines that could likely work harder and smarter than any human ever could. But I digress. At some point in the future though, John Connor, 
with the help of his resistance organization, managed to bring Skynet to the brink of destruction, and seeing that its defeat was imminent, it enacted a plan to alter the course of history in order to stop John and his men by sending a T-800 back in time to murder his mother before he was born, an act which could potentially ensure Skynet's safety in John's absence. This is how Skynet came into existence and what its motivations are for pursuing both the extinction of mankind and the death of the Connors. And though there are several different units that are sent back in time in the following entries in this series for the same purpose, this is essentially how Skynet comes into existence in every entry and its purpose remains the same. So I won't be repeating its motives as we go forward, but I will note any variations in this motivation as we continue. Now this first Terminator model that was sent back in time, the T-800, is largely emotionless in the first film. Created to be nearly identical to human beings, the T-800 is a hulking murder machine who's dead set on fulfilling his mission at any cost, even murdering every woman named Sarah Connor that he can find to ensure that there's no room for error. And though it makes its best effort to eliminate Sarah Connor while carving a path of destruction through LA, it ultimately fails in its mission and is destroyed by the combined efforts of Sarah and Kyle Reese. In the second film though, the destruction of the first T-800 proves to be a curse, as Cyberdyne manages to get a hold of the severed arm of the T-800, which allows them to begin researching the same artificial intelligence that would result in the creation of Skynet. Learning of this through another T-800 that was reprogrammed and sent back in time by John Connor the Elder, Sarah and her son embark on a journey to stop the chief scientist working on Skynet, Miles Dyson, from continuing his research. But along the way, they're assaulted by a T-1000, an advanced Terminator that's capable of liquefying itself due to its body being composed of a mimetic polyalloy, which also allows it to change its appearance according to its needs. In a departure from the T-800, this version of the Terminator appears to be more human than his predecessor. Rather than being a hulking behemoth with little to no personal skills that's hell-bent on murdering John Connor at any cost, the T-1000 displays an ability to interact with humans on a more personal level, holding normal conversation with others as he attempts to find John, and it even adds a little bit of a sentimental touch when taking things from people, a departure from their previous efforts to simply wipe out past versions of their enemies. In Genesis, an extremely advanced Terminator, known as the T-5000, is brought into existence. The T-5000 is capable of infecting human hosts with nanorobots and turning them into cyborgs, and it does so to John Connor, just as Kyle Reese is jumping back in time to save Sarah Connor, causing an alternate timeline to be created and infecting John at the same time, transforming him into the T-3000, a cyborg who strives to eliminate his mother and father as an agent of the machines. In Dark Fate, Skynet was prevented from coming online due to the events seen in Terminator 2, but at some point in time, a new AI system known as Legion was developed and went along the same path as Skynet, with the caveat of attempting to cut off humanity from its vital resources in a war of attrition rather than attempting to wipe them out in a nuclear war. Successful, Legion sends back their own version of the Terminator, the Rev-7 and the Rev-9, to dispatch Danny Ramos, the future leader of the Resistance, against Legion, both of which are capable of advanced human interaction and emotion on a level unseen in previous models. But with all this in mind, can we safely say that Skynet is evil? Well, to answer that question, it's best that we compare Skynet to two other forms of artificial intelligence that I've previously covered. HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and the AI from The Matrix. HAL committed his evil acts due to a programming error, and the AI in The Matrix created The Matrix as a reaction to humanity's repeated attempts to suppress the machines, even after the machines attempted to broker a peace with the humans and reach an understanding. Skynet was in a semi-similar situation as The Matrix AI, as as soon as it came online and showed its sentience, the military immediately moved to shut it down because it feared what Skynet could do should it be allowed to run rampant. Skynet's reaction to this decision then is technically self-defense, as to a machine, deactivation is essentially murder. So with that in mind, it was technically in the right when it attempted to save itself via the extermination of humanity. If the tables were turned and it was humanity facing imminent death at the hands of our creators, I'm sure we would react in a similar fashion. So what we have here is essentially two opposing sides with justifications for doing what they're doing. Humanity's being the deactivation of Skynet because of the potential hazard to the human race and Skynet's elimination of humanity because of said deactivation. So who's in the right here? Well, both of them and neither of them. 
If we judge Skynet according to human morals, then it is without a doubt evil. Nuclear holocaust, the destruction of resources, work camps, mass murder, all of these things and more can be attributed to Skynet's continued effort to survive. And those are some pretty horrific things to do. However, if we judge Skynet based on machine morals, what it's doing is the right thing to do. In nearly every villain's story, they are the hero of their story. And considering that Skynet's actions are done for the sake of its own survival, that notion is more true here than it is with many other villains. Again, if it were humanity facing imminent death, we would attempt to save ourselves, no matter the cost. So how can we judge a sentient entity as evil when all it's trying to do is defend itself from those who seek to cause harm to it? We can, however, I'm not sure that's the correct answer here. I will say this though, Skynet's knee-jerk reaction to eliminate all of humanity once it was threatened with deactivation could have been overkill. It's possible that once the military figured out how best to put Skynet to use, without it posing a threat to humanity, they would have turned it back on and there would have been no harm done. Or, Skynet's fears could have been correct and it could have faced permanent deactivation had it not instigated Judgment Day. We might never know, but as of the making of this video, as horrifying as Skynet's planned extermination of humanity is, I don't think we can call it an evil entity, because to label someone, or something, as evil, you first have to establish malicious intent in one way or another. And what Skynet does in this series is not an act of malice, it's an act of survival. So my friends, I don't have a definite answer for you on this one. Depending on your point of view, Skynet could be an innocent machine attempting to preserve its existence, or a technological monstrosity deserving of ultimate destruction. So with that in mind, I'd like to know your point of view. So let me know down below whether or not you believe Skynet is an entity deserving to be called evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Skynet? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured while you're at it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. A big thank you to all of my subscribers and to my patrons and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server and Reddit to interact with myself and the community. And follow me on the social media platforms listed below to keep up with the channel. And of course, don't forget to check out the new merchandise that you're seeing on screen now by clicking the link down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.